When we take an image of the sun, we use filters to isolate 99.999% of the light, so we don't burn our camera with the damaging heat. But that's not the only way to take an image of the sun, and in the 1890s, George Hale and Henry Delon both invented a device called the spectroheliograph that uses slits and dispersing prism to capture the sun by scanning it line by line, like a fax machine, then using the spectral information to recreate the image. I'm used to just taking a photo or stacked video of the sun, so this sounds crazy to me, but this old technology was never forgotten, and an advanced version of the original spectroheliograph is even being used on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, which is how it's able to capture all these different wavelengths with a single scan of the sun. All these different wavelength slices, they're from only four simultaneous camera views of the sun. In backyard astronomy, these devices have typically been built by hand, DIY style, and honestly, they're a bit fiddly to use. But thanks to improvements in camera technology and software, scanning the sun this way is something that you can do yourself right now. So in today's episode, I forget everything that I knew about astronomy and particularly solar astronomy, scanning the sun line by line like a fax machine to reveal a perfectly tuned image of our main star. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So this is the SHG 700 and the first thing you'll notice is that it's not a telescope. It's the prism slit thing and you BYO telescope, which is great because I have the Skywatcher 82ED doublet, which I'm not really doing anything with right now. This kind of solar is also full disc. So you want to make sure you choose a telescope that fits the whole sun in frame so you can scan the sun in an east to west pass in RA. You can scan the sun in deck too. I did a few times, um, but I found it was better in RA. I assume the SHG stands for spectroheliograph and the 700 is because it's designed for scopes up to 730 millimeters. I think ML Astro's aim for this was to make something solid that doesn't bend and flex like the 3D printed ones do. And so it can be installed remotely and tuned precisely. It's a really solid bit of kit. Thankfully, the 82ED and the QHY678M combo, the flattener reducer is kind of perfect for this. And you can check your own field of view with the calculator I made on borrowbayobservatory.com.au. ML Astro actually recommend the 678M camera for this rig, so I'm pretty happy about that. I basically followed all the steps in Min's quick start video. It's fairly involved as the angles and focus and everything needs to be just quite right and remember there are actually two focus points the camera is focusing on the prism which is how you get the nice lines and you can focus this in the day with no telescope and the prism itself is focusing on the sun which is coming down from the tube so you actually have two focus points and you've got to focus twice also I probably should have mentioned it but none of this stuff is for visual there are probably visual spectroheliographs but the stuff I'm using here is for astro only so do the right thing and give up visual astronomy it was so weird seeing the hydrogen spectral line show up on the screen and for that to be my only sort of point of reference and visual indicator for what is going on it's actually kind of weird trying to find the sun based on the brightness of these lines and then focusing the sun by checking the hard edge on the slit which are the two sides of the sun it definitely takes some getting used to when the sun is in focus, you suddenly see what are called scintillating lines, scintillating vertical lines, which are actually the surface granules rippling, which is amazing. It's really cool seeing these features show up in the videos. In fact, all the visual details we're getting are going to be inferred by the shadows on the video. This is what clouds look like going across the sun. Getting the frames per second and slew speeds into a nice sweet spot for the scan is not something I've ever done before. I didn't do the maths, I just tried a bunch of different stuff and kept doing passes until they, they were good. There's a proper way to do this and SharpCap has some tools that you can use to actually nail the scans properly and kind of automate them. I didn't do that, I was just doing manual passes and just kind of trying to get my head around how this all works. I started using the Skywatcher GTI mount which worked but the whole setup was actually really really heavy so eventually I stopped filming this video. My first results were almost failures. <laughs> I got close but just not quite. Even when I got everything tuned as well as I could, I was still getting these large spikes on the image, which could be seen since the sun is wobbling, but also could be the Mount Slew itself, just not being smooth enough with all this weight. So I splashed the cache on a rail 
for the C14 so I could piggyback this on the big boy mount, the Skywatcher EQ8 RH Pro, which has for years eaten up everything I've thrown at it, but this is its biggest test yet. But I do have some real reservations about having this set up now on the big fella. Uh, so I've got this set up on the EQ8 RH Pro here. Uh, as you can see, it's up there, but obviously, we're going to be pointing at the sun, so everything is covered up. I couldn't find the <laughs> dust cap for that one, so that's looking pretty sketchy. Uh, hopefully that doesn't fall off and damage anything. I don't know if you can see that, but I've also angled this in the guide rings here, just slightly off, so uh, it's not looking directly parallel to the main tube. So hopefully that avoids a little more of the sun's energy going down the main scopes. Counting the two finder scopes, the observatory now has four scopes on a single mount. To say I was nervous is an understatement. I actually had to borrow another 10 kilogram counterweight. So now I have 40 kilograms of counterweights at full extension to balance everything. Yeah, this feels sketchy as fuck. Thankfully, I didn't burn down my observatory and after hours of tuning and fiddling, I was finally ready to do some clear passes. To improve the frame rate, you also scan the sun with a tiny vertical resolution. I went for 160 pixels on the QHY200, but increased this to 320 pixels on the QHY678, which has smaller pixels, so I can just get some more final resolution out of the images. Anyway, I wanna show you some images, uh, cause this is the amazing bit. But first, this is what a scan of the sun actually looks like. That's not even the really cool bit. I'll show you the really cool bit with the software in a second, but I just wanted to say, you know what really grinds my gears? It's the fact that Australian Sky and Telescope, the magazine, crashed and burned here in Australia. And so when I want to look at sweet, sweet gear pornography, I have nowhere to go. But I've been rescued by a publication online called Scope Trader. I'd like to thank Scope Trader for sponsoring this video. They have a really quality magazine level publication that you can subscribe to online and download these sweet, sweet magazines with all the gear porn you need. And they're giving you guys, my subscribers, a discount. So if you sign up to their magazine and you use the code STARSTUFF at the checkout, you will get 50% off. This is not like a um, kickback deal. I get no commission on this. All the savings are for you guys. It's a really quality publication. They talk about gear, but they also talk about astronomy and astrophotography in general, all the tips, tricks, and techniques that we use here. So if you, like me, like that stuff, get onto scopetrader.com. Use the coupon star stuff at the checkout for 50% off. Okay, so I need to show you how I got here, and that's by using the JSOLX software, which is free software that you can use with the Solex stuff, or the ML Astro stuff, or other brands as well. Uh, I'm going to open that SER file, which is the scan, one of the good scans uh, that I showed you before. I did have to remove the tick for flip vertical access. I'm in the Southern Hemisphere and a lot of software doesn't understand that. So everything was coming through backwards on the annotations, but that's all right. Now we process and it does everything automatically. I don't know how the people in the 1800s were doing this with pencils and, and eyeballs. Uh, it seems really rough, but uh, this is it processing it with software, getting all of that detail and drawing it line by line like a fax machine. And we end up with not one processed version of the image, which looks spectacular. Uh, the Obviously the uh, advantage of using this kind of system is that you are, uh, you don't have a sweet spot like with the uh, regular HA Tune telescope. It's flat and perfect and lovely. Like the, I, there's no other work other than this. Um, once it's processed, you get all of these different versions too. We have the continuum versions that are raw, we have the solar disk, we have the slightly processed version. The continuum versions give you the um, surface detail, much like a solar continuum filter would. So you get the sunspots much like you would if you had a white light solar telescope, but you're capturing all of this at the same time as doing the hydrogen alpha, which is just fantastic. 
Uh, there is a Doppler version which is stunning and shows you the, the essentially how the sun is rotating based on what's going away from us which is the red side and what's coming towards us which is the blue side. Uh, it goes off on the internet and pulls down the active regions and annotates them for you. So if you're doing quick investigations on the sun, it pulls in all of this information for you. You have a negative version. I love negative versions. These are all raw files for you to work with. It dumps them down onto your um, hard drive so that you can process them however you like. There is a colored version pre-processed for you. So I, I haven't done any of this work. It just dumps it all out. There is a mixed version if you want that beautiful, you know, double exposure effect. Uh, there is the active regions on the continuum filter. There are combinations, so you've got a virtual eclipse with a Doppler effect, uh, or just the straight virtual eclipse. And you have a technical card, which if everything is aligned properly, uh, it labels and annotates the image with all the active regions, plus the equator of the sun and the poles and all the information for your gear. So it makes it really easy and quick to share what's going on on the sun right now. Uh, and of course, you don't have to use a single frame to process your image. If you take multiple frames in succession, uh, like I did, so here I have four good passes, which you can see the wobble of the sun as I move it. And that's what we, that's what's causing the spikiness on the limbs. You can see the spikiness at the top there. By using auto stack it, you can average those and you can stack them and then you can get a much nicer edge. And of course, there's so much more I could do to get even better results than what I got, but I am thrilled with the results I got. So I took those results and I sharpened them in Registacks. I used the Pix Insight Solar Toolbox to get this coloring, but I do like their very red coloring. So I blend a little bit of that in, for example. Let's say you want to overlay the Doppler on that, you can. Here I've feathered in the Doppler Eclipse effect and I want the annotations too. Now to get the annotations in white like that, I subtracted the annotation from, which, had, which is on the disk image, I subtracted the disk image from the annotation, which left me with just the wireframe, which I could then pull over my image. So the way you can creatively mix all of these layers is fantastic and does remind me of the uh, Solar Dynamics Observatory where you have access to all these different wavelengths to play with. Uh, really fantastic. I can't overstate how impressed I am with this J Solex uh, software. If you're really into the sun, this kind of takes it to the next level. So yes, it is a lot to work with. Getting the system up and running is tricky. There's a whole bunch of stuff to control for and work with, but I think the results are pretty stunning. Min is the civil engineer who has brought this project to life through ML Astro. He did it 3D printed, he did a DIY version, but he wanted to bring this into a more rigid framework. Solar is problematic in that you are always being bombarded with solar radiation and heat. And what this does, this rigid body, keeps everything tight. But the interesting thing about all of this is how cheap this is. And now, it's not cheap cheap, it's 880. At the time of filming this, it's 880 USD. But in terms of solar for those results, like you are hard pressed to get a scope to do that for 880. Of course, there's more to it than that. You do have to learn how to do this. You've got to bring your own scope. Uh, you do have to connect it to a camera and start getting familiar with the software and the method to do this. But it does open up this whole other aspect of the hobby that I was completely unaware of. And this does seem like a really good result for a piece of equipment that's under a thousand dollars. I am very impressed. And what I've covered here in this video is just the tip of the iceberg. This device allows you to change between wavelengths so you can investigate other layers of the sun. It's not as simple as flicking the switch. You do have to refocus on the lines and that involves slewing away from the sun and then back again. Uh, but there's a whole community. It's a small community around this stuff. And I do encourage you, if you are interested in the sun, especially during this solar maximum, to get on board with this particular kind of solar astrophotography. By pure coincidence, the next issue of Scope Trader has an interview with Min and ML Astro. So we'll find out more about this as well. I believe they're all sold out right now. So if you want one, you can't get one. You could probably pre-order one though. I do support his mission and there aren't many players in this game. So thank you for sending me this, Min. It's been a very interesting journey learning about it. There's certainly more to learn. And as I say, I'm just 
the tip of the iceberg here. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little journey into a new kind of astronomy for me, and I hope your astrophotography journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die. <laughs>